Welcome to Ground Control in another episode of the Pilot's Lounge. I can't believe it's been five months since I posted one of these episodes. I guess when you're when you're out flying RC aircraft, I guess time flies too. Alright, so I have a lot of information. One of them is going to be the review update on the Ishin Mini F-16. But before I get started on that, I wanted to... Um, give you some information. I got a shout out, um, not once, not twice, but four times in one video from a YouTube channel that has a fairly large subscriber base. And it was from Dom at Essential RC. I don't know if you guys subscribe to Essential RC, but I've been a, a subscriber of theirs for a long time. And I comment periodically on their videos. And he had posted his first review video, the Ishii Mini F-16, shortly after I had posted mine. So, so I commented on his video and told him that I was having a lot of fun with, with my Ishii Mini F-16. And then uh, Dom and I uh, commented back and forth a couple of times and he was asking me about the twitchiness of the, of the Mini F-16 and I gave him information on the linkage modifications that I had made on the Mini F-16 uh, actually before I even took it out to do the review of it and um, and how how much that toned down uh, the the control surfaces on the plane and made it much easier to handle so so he instituted the same modifications and then gave me four shout outs in his second video I'll have a link to his video in the show notes but um, Getting, a, getting four shout outs in one video from, from a site that has that many subscribers uh, really made my day. So I thought you guys would uh, get tickled with that information. So I was really happy about that. Uh, I didn't expect it. It was a very pleasant surprise and I want to thank Dom at Essential RC for doing that again. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I've had some contributors to the site via our PayPal tip jar. And I want to thank you guys very much, you know, I, you know, financial contributions, especially in this day and age with, with the pandemic and everything, are really tough for a lot of people. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, I had one person that contributed a substantial amount, and um, he is going to be credited with a future aircraft review that we do because without his financial contribution I would not have been able to pull the trigger on this aircraft so Paul H you are a very generous individual and I want to thank you so much for that and when this um, aircraft review takes place it will be dedicated to you so um, you're a uh, a very generous individual and I really appreciate that I want to thank all of you for subscribing to the channel, for posting comments, for providing feedback on the videos that we release, and um, and your support. I mean, it's absolutely great. I want to thank my patrons on our Patreon side. Um, and, you know, another financial contributions. I know that it's really tough for people to make, especially now that they've they've changed the rules that now the government's collecting tax on the contributions to patrons so so those of you that have stuck with me through all that I certainly appreciate all of your support now and in the future okay so review updates first is the Ishin Mini F-16 it, it's a great flying little plane but it is really twitchy right out of the box and you do if you do make those modifications that I suggested to the control surfaces on the elevator and on the ailerons, it's going to really make it handle much more in the air, even with the stock transmitter. If you have a hobby grade transmitter with a 4 in 1 module, like I do, the Radio Master TX16S, it's even easier to fly. I like the beginner mode, I like the intermediate mode, and in the intermediate, intermediate mode, you can do some really cool high alpha with it. The plane is a little underpowered with the direct drive uh, brushed motor, the 1020 motor, and the 2.5 inch prop. 
I wish they would have put a, a, a small brushless motor on there to provide more thrust than the 1020 motor can it with the direct drive prop. So it's not real aerobatic, but it is a really fun plane to fly. I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, I do not like their expert mode on this because it is not manual mode. I think they call it an expo mode. And you still have input from the gyro. So I would much prefer in the future that they provide a manual mode on these park jets like they do with the traditional airplanes they come out with like the uh, Mini Warbirds, those are fantastic. I love the gyro setup on those. Beginner, intermediate, and full manual mode. And I wish that you guys would start doing that with your park jets as well because the F-22 was the same way. And you had, <coughs> excuse me, you had interference from the gyro in expert mode. I don't want any interference from the gyro. I want a complete manual mode in expert mode. So I hope they change that in the future. But uh, I, I do recommend that as if you want, you're looking for a beginner park jet, not a traditional plane, but if you're looking for a beginner park jet, the, the gyro in beginner mode and intermediate mode, if you make the linkage modifications, it is a great handling little plane and it's very locked in with the gyro and you're going to have a blast with it. The Racer Star BR 1408-3600KV motor that I reviewed and posted thrust data from. And I did the field testing of that in the XKJ3 Cub because the stock motor just just doesn't have enough power, you know, to do aerobatics with that plane. And one of my favorite motors previous to this one was the Racer Star BR 1407 3500 kV motor. Well, this motor, the 1408 3600 kV, not only does it provide more thrust then a motor from Racer Star that I already loved, and I have it in my um, GFS F22 Micro. This one provides more thrust while pulling fewer amps with the props that I tested. So it's a win-win situation. So I plan on buying more of those motors because that is an excellent motor for a lot of these micro projects, whether you're going to run them off of 2S or whether you're going to run them off of 3S. It's a great motor for, for both of those uh, types of power systems for these micro planes. The Eshin Mini Wing Dragon. Okay, I refer to that as a tinker plane. It is definitely a tinker plane, which is a shame. You know, it's a shame that the, uh, the transmitter had issues, the onboard gyro had issues, the motor in mine had issues. So, you know, the only thing that I didn't have problems with as far as the, as far as the electronics was the servos. So I ended up replacing that brick, the stock brick. I replaced the 1020 motor with another 1020 motor. I put a larger prop on it. And um, what else did I do? I think, I think that's it. I had to adjust the, the balance on it, the CG a little bit, but it ended up being a, a very nice slow flying cruiser plane, even in manual mode. Uh, the gyro brick that I put in it from my old um, WL Toys F949 is just a manual mode brick, but it handles extremely well. Once you get the balance and everything set up on it, it has a great, very shallow, um, very nice glide to it. Um, so, if you're looking for a cruiser plane like that, and and you know it's a tinker plane, so if you don't mind working on it, replacing some components. Um, hopefully in the near future if they don't if they don't already have them posted if you're looking for something like that what I would do when it becomes available is I would just buy the fuselage parts you know the landing gear and stuff for that plane and I put my own electronics in it I think it would be a less expensive way to go and then you'll end up with an exceptional flying little cruiser plane okay the GFS F22 Nano version 1 I I converted this, I think, since the last episode, the Pilot's Lounge episode, um, I converted this from 1S to 2S, and I don't know if you guys have watched any of the videos, the performance of this little nano park jet on a 2S, but it is an absolute rocket now uh, compared to the 1S setup. I think for the... I think for the nano park jet style planes going forward, 
I think I'm going to set those up for 2S power systems right off of the bat. Um, and I really I like the size of this little Flybear SU-35. It's 11.4 inch wingspan. So, and this is a 10 inch wingspan on the GFS Nano uh, F22 version 1. And I think when I rebuild this again, when I come out with the version 2, I think I'm going to go with a 12 inch. A 12 inch wingspan and a 3 inch prop and a 2S power system setup. And uh, because of the performance difference between a 1S um, and a 2S, it's just so stark. You know, on a 1S, this is really fun to fly. I think on a 1S power system, it makes a really good trainer park jet because it doesn't go, it doesn't fly really fast. Um, it'll do aerobatics, but you know it's it's not a powerhouse, and it's pretty easy to handle on a 1S system. I think a beginner could handle this on a 1S system, no problem. I think for a 2S setup, I think you need to have a little a little better than beginner uh, skill level to fly it because it is so small and it is so fast on a 2S, and it has such a such a large thrust to weight ratio. Uh, so more of an intermediate level park jets, I think, going forward, whether they're uh, whether they're nano, micro, or minis, I think that I think I'm going to be setting those up for um, more power in the future for the nanos, the micros, and the minis are already there. They they have unlimited vertical, but I would also like to have unlimited vertical on my nano park jets going forward. So. That's my plan for the future with the nano size park jets. It's going to be a little bit larger, a little bit larger than this one. And um, it, it makes them easier to build, I think. It makes it easier to get them set up so they fly exceptionally well. And it makes it easier to carry a 2S power system. So, But if you haven't watched any of the <laughs> flight videos of that on a 2S power system, you ought to check them out because it's unbelievable. Okay. Um, GFS T33 um, is, I've done all the testing I can do with it. Unfortunately, I, I, you know, this project is taking so long because I have to keep pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. And whenever I have spare time where I'm not doing reviews or other projects, I work on it as much as I can. I had it out the other day um, after basically breaking the center of the wing and cracking it like an egg and bringing it up so I can get a lot more dihedral in it. So my feeling is now after performing two additional test flights on it with additional dihedral on it, I have learned everything that I can from that specific airframe. So now I'm ready to make my design changes from everything that I've learned from the prototype and institute those changes, build it again and take it back out and see how well it's improved. Um, over the over the original prototype. My hope is to get that released by midsummer this year, even if I have to put other things on hold to, to just completely focus on the T33. I want to get that project completed and get the plans out ready for build and have plenty of flight videos to show you guys. It's such a cool looking airframe, you know. I want to I want to have that completed and flying exceptionally well because it just looks so darn cool in the air too, and I think it's going to be a I think it's going to be a pretty easy build, not quite as easy as the F-22s, but it's going to be a fairly easy build. So stay tuned for that. I'm I haven't forgotten about it. I'm still working on it, and I'm going to set aside some time to dedicate to it. So. That's where we are with that project. Um, conversion. This, this little fly bear, um, SU-35, was a little two-channel plane. I, I produced a lot of videos, a lot of flight videos. I did the review, and I took this out and flew it a lot because it was, it was very relaxing to just go out sometimes and just fly a two-channel plane and all you have to worry about is left, right, and throttle management. And it was also a great training tool for kids to learn how to fly RC aircraft because you've just got left, right, and throttle. 
and that's it. And so it makes it easier for, I think, kids who've never flown RC planes before to be able to concentrate on those two things and learn to do those two things. And then you can move them up, you know. But um, I had purchased a, a receiver that had a built-in brushless speed controller, 4 amp brushless speed controller, it had a built-in DSM2, DSMX receiver, and it was a four channel. And it also had a three axis gyro built into it, but it also had full manual mode. I would not buy a, a, a gyro brick that did not have full manual mode on it. So I had that. I didn't realize at the time that I purchased it that it, the firmware was locked for L1 only mixing. And I thought, wow, that thing is set in the box forever and a day now. I was really pretty irritated, you know, that that wasn't specified in the documentation for that receiver break. That in order to break that, you had to download their software, you have to have a cable and a programming tool to be able to break that L1 mixing inside the firmware. And I wasn't gonna do that. I wasn't gonna spend additional money to do that. So I had been looking at this little two channel park jet for a long time, wanting to convert it and finally be able to use that receiver break. Now, my first thoughts with this plane was to make it elevon and elevator, you know, clip the elevators together, have a single servo for the ailerons and a single servo for the elevator <coughs> for a bank and yank plane. Because I looked at the elevator and I thought, you know, I would like to be able to use that receiver brick and just use it as elevon only, but looking at the size of the horizontal stabilizer and where you would need to cut your elevons because I, did, I didn't want to cut these back too much because then it would make them weak. So this was as big as, as I wanted to make the elevons and I thought, I don't think that's enough surface area, you know, to be able to roll this plane and do split S maneuvers and do decent loops and stuff with it, you know, but I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot anyway. That's what I have to work with, that's what I'm going to do. And if that doesn't work out, I can always abandon those electronics and, and use a single servo for ailerons and a single servo for elevator, you know, as a backup plan. So I went ahead and I converted this to brushless. I don't know, uh, uh, by the time that you guys see this video, this, this plane will be golden. I will have everything set up on it and have it um, all tuned out. But um, I was so surprised at how well this little plane flew, uh, converted to brushless. I mean, absolutely fantastic, and I have such a blast with it. And it's 2S power system, and it has a lot of power. Not quite the thrust-to-weight ratio that the GFS F22 Mini has, or Nano has, but pretty close, and both of them are just awesome little nano park jets. I have so much fun with this. I wanted to mention that um, I've taken photos, I think, of just about every step of the way when I was performing this conversion. And um, I'm putting that information together now. Um, I will do a show and tell tutorial on the conversion, the process for the conversion on this plane and also provide you a link with the conversion log so there will be images uh, of all the steps that I took to convert along with you know an explanation of what's going on in the image. I think between the show and tell video and the downloadable PDF for the conversion log I, I think anybody will be able to perform the conversion on this little nano park jet and it is an awesome flying little park jet. I mean, I've, I have had an absolute blast with this. Even during the tuning process, I was having a blast with it. Now this thing is completely locked in and performs exceptionally well, has plenty of power for, for all types of aerobatics. It's very fast, but it also has a very fl wide flight envelope. You know, you, put a little little bit of high alpha into it, you can fly it fairly slowly. So, exceptional flying little nano park jet, man. So, so watch for that. Uh, along with the setup file, I'll create a setup file that has all my 
uh, control surface movement, my uh, model file for open TX transmitters, um, all links, all the components that I used for it, um, the amount of expo I have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it was a pretty straightforward, it's a pretty easy conversion. So if you guys want to do something like that, and I think my total cost for a bind and fly um, setup, and included everything except for the lipo, uh, bind and fly setup conversion for this, I think came to around $70 US, including the plane. And um, that's probably on par with what you would find for something this size that was a bind and fly or a ready to fly factory plane. But I'll guarantee you the factory plane is not going to have anywhere close to the performance that this one has. So, uh, something you might want to think about on down the road if you have time to do a conversion. That is an excellent conversion project right there. One thing I wanted to ask you guys, on my, I include a lot of information on my setup files. But I was thinking about it the other day when I was launching this and trying to figure out the best throttle setting. Where you, where you would get it in the air without it stalling, but not so much throttle that it would induce a lot of torque roll. And I thought, having my, my hand, you know, for those aircraft that you have to hand launch, having the throttle setting for the hand launch and the setup file, would, do you guys think that would be useful information to have? I haven't included that in any of my previous setup files. But I thought that might be an additional piece of information that you guys might want, might want or be interested in. So let me let me know um, if nobody's interested in it. I don't want to go back and edit my previous setup files to include that information. All right. So, and this brings me to our Facebook page. I don't know how many of you follow our Facebook page. But we post a lot of information on our Facebook page. Any information basically that doesn't require a video to get the information across, then I post it on our Facebook page. I don't just post our latest videos that are available on our Facebook page. I post a lot of information on there. The um, pictures of the details of the modification that I did for the linkages on the Ishin Mini F16, I post it on our Facebook page. It didn't require a video when I post setup files for aircraft or model files for OpenTX that I have programmed in my TX16S, I'm going to be posting those on Facebook. Um, when I come out with a show and tell video, I will have the, um, the con conversion log available as a downloadable link when I do the show and tell video on the conversion. But that information will also be, be posted on our Facebook page. So, you know, some of the information that we post is our setup files, our model files, our mods and adjustments. We, I've started showcasing some of our builds of our Glue and Fly series aircraft. I know there are people out there that are built, downloading these plans of building these aircraft. And so uh, some of them are sending me their images of their builds. And so I'm going to start showcasing those on our Facebook page and also on our C groups. So if you guys are building any of our, any of our GFS planes uh, and, and you would like to have your build showcase, send me a link to images or send me images. Um, our email address is info at groundcontrolrc.com. So if you want to send me images of your build or a link to images of your build, I'd love to showcase your builds on our Facebook page as well. We post photos from our latest flight sessions you know that you don't you don't get that as part of the video upload and and all kinds of other information so even if you don't follow our facebook page or want to follow our facebook page you want to you might want to fly over there from time to time and see what's being posted because it might be information that you want you know whether it's a setup file for an aircraft um, images from the conversion or something else or from a flight or, you know, uh, model files. You know, I'm going to start, as I get more and more models set up on my TX-16S, I'm going to start publishing those model files and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name them G1, G2, G3 for groups because I program aircraft in that transmitter and when I no longer have that aircraft, I remove it. 
So, but I want to keep those available for people who want to be able to use them. So I'm going to have, I'll, I'll publish a one file that's going to be group one. And then I'll have a list of the aircraft that are in that model file. And then when I add aircraft and remove aircraft, and then I'll create the second group and I'll have a list of the aircraft that are in that group. So, you know, some of the planes will be the same because there are some planes that I like enough that I'm, I'm going to keep but I do have to whittle down my Air Force from time to time. And so once I get rid of an airplane, give it away, uh, retire it, whatever, um, it gets removed <coughs> from the transmitter. So that's, that's more information that we're going to be posting on our Facebook page. In the pipe, in the pipe, what I do with it? In the pipe, okay, this, this just arrived. This is a Dancing Wings Hobby Pitts 450 millimeter. It's a complete kit. This is basically a bind and fly kit. It comes with all the electronics, less the battery. So the only thing I have to supply is the battery and the glue to put the airframe together. It's a complete kit. So, and I, I haven't flown a biplane before. So this is courtesy of Banggood. I want to thank them very much for sending this. And it was, it was so funny because I had been looking at this for about a week. You know, every once in a while I go through and I look at the new aircraft that they have available, and I saw this. And so I, I put it in my wish list. And um, I thought, you know, I wouldn't mind buying something like that and taking it out and flying it. And, cause, and it looks really cool, and I've never flown a biplane. I think it would be a lot of fun. So, and then lo and behold, uh, Banggood sends me one for a review. So I was like, deja vu. That's awesome. So... I have this, as soon as I have time, I will go through, I'll go through the assembly. We'll go through the assembly, we'll go through the setup, we'll take it out and we'll tune it up and get it flying the way we want. And for what you get, it's fairly inexpensive, which is another reason I was looking at it. So, okay, so that's in the pipeline right now. What else is in the pipeline? All right, and a review coming up on the Racer Start BA. 2216 1400 kV motor. So I'm going to be doing the review and the bench test on that and I'm going to provide, I will make the bench test data available for download and that's another bit of information that we will be posting on our Facebook page um, with a summary, you know, where I, I think that motor fits in. But, you know, doing video reviews of motors and bench testing is pretty boring stuff. You know, so that's the way I'm going to do it going forward. I'm not going to make a video and, and give you the numbers. I'm just going to provide them as a downloadable document and then, you know, post a text of summary of where I think the motor fits in. And the reason I purchased that motor um, is because, like, my planes seem to be getting bigger and bigger over time. And, um, the, the mini sized planes, I think the Racer Star 2212 1400 kV motor is such a versatile motor for mini sized planes. I didn't know they sold them in a six pack, but I actually bought two six packs of Racer Star BR 2212 1400 kV motors. Can you believe? I never thought I would buy a 12 pack of motors, but I did. Um, I've got so many aircraft now, right now, and aircraft in the future that I think that those motors, they're so versatile, I think they're going to work great um, for future aircraft too. And they're dirt cheap. I mean, I, I, in a six pack, I think I paid like, I think it was under six dollars a motor that I paid for those. And I absolutely love those motors. So um, I had a 2216 Racer Star 2216 that I ordered previously that was made for a uh, multi-rotor. Of course, most of the motors I order are multi-rotor motors, but this one had this big, huge riser, you know, that it was almost like it was made for a specific prop. So I was so disappointed when I got that motor because, you, you, you know, there's no props that would fit the darn thing. And I didn't know that at the time that I ordered it. So I didn't recommend it. But this one is an actual airplane motor, uh, or not airplane, but a multi-rotor motor, but it has, uh, it has a plate with a five millimeter shaft that you attach to it so that you can actually use props with a five millimeter hub on it, which is you know, normally what I purchase. 
So this is going to be a much more versatile motor. It's also 1400 kV. So for larger planes with larger props, the 2216 is going to provide a lot more torque than the 2212. So I think for larger planes, the 2216 1400 kV motor is going to be just as versatile as the 2212 1400 kV is for many size planes. So that will be coming. Uh, the thrust data will be coming as soon as I have a chance to put it on the thrust stand. The Eshin Mini P51D. I finally worn out the motor in the gearbox on that little, I call it a nano plane, a little nano warbler. So I, I think I have a motor and prop that will work, a brushless motor and prop that will work on that on a 1S setup and provide as much thrust as the brush system with the gearbox provides with the 5-inch prop. So I am going to attempt to do a brushless conversion of the Eshin Mini P51D. If that works out on the Mini P51D, then it should work out on the Volantex Sport Cup 500. It should work on the Eshin Mini F4U Corsair and the T20A and any others that they come out with. So I got my fingers crossed on that. Okay, so we'll see how that works out. I think it's doable, but we'll, we'll, we won't know until I get it completed, how well it flies. So I will be providing a tutorial pretty soon on downloading, trimming, and assembling our tiled plans into full-size plans. I have now got a process that will work with letter-sized printers, letter-sized paper, A4 paper. Well, one set of tiled plans that should work for both formats with, um, with crop marks on them. So I'm going to go over all that and we're actually going to, to print those and cut them and assemble them into full size plans. So it will make it easier for people to download the plans, print them on a standard printer and be able to build the plan, cut out the parts and build the plant, build the aircraft. So. Hopefully that will help people build our GFS airplanes. Uh, I've been using different build techniques uh, with the T33 project. And I'm trying to figure out ways of making builds as simple as possible while making the aircraft look nice and, and fly exceptionally well. So I think I'm going to, once this project is complete, I'm going to come out with a line of of aircraft they're going to be, I'm going to call them Profile Plus, they're going to be kind of a profile, they're going to be kind of a hybrid between a profile plane and a standard build plane. And I'm going to call it a Profile Plus plane. So I'll show you what I mean when I come out with the first, when I come out with the first build. And I think I may go ahead and do that with the T33 uh, Micro when I rebuild it because I think it will also help keep the weight down. So, and I would like I would like to get that down to around 140 grams. Right now, it's on 158. So, so we'll see how that works out. So, stay tuned for that. Anyway, uh, I wish it hadn't taken so long to produce another one of these episodes, but I had a lot of information to go over. There's a lot of things in the pipe right now. I want to thank Banggood again for sending this for review. Um, I should be able to have that you know, uh, those videos posted the next couple weeks. So, thank you guys again for all your support. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, whether it's subscribing to the channel, contributing um, as a patron, contributing to our uh, PayPal tip jar, uh, commenting on our videos, subscribing, uh, providing feedback, um, all of it makes it worth doing this. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.